At this stage, when we start looking at integration, we talk about antiderivatives, we are assuming that you know how to differentiate, that you know your differentiation rules, and you're good at differentiating, because if you cannot differentiate, then you cannot look at what we call antiderivatives and integration. So let's take a look at this example. Here are four functions. They only differ by a constant. I've sketched them here. If we had to find the derivatives of these functions, take a look. The derivative of this first function is just a third times 3, so it's 1x squared. So it's x squared. The derivative of the second one is x squared plus 0, so it's also x squared. The derivative of the third one, you see the pattern, we also have x squared. So what we notice is that if I've got the function x squared, there's a lot of functions I can derive to get to x squared, all right? They all differ by a constant. Now, we call this function here an antiderivative of x squared. What is the function that I have to derive to get to x squared? Now, you will notice that we've got more than one option. So the antiderivative is not unique. Whereas if I differentiate a function, my answer is unique. There's only one possible answer when I differentiate a function. But when I get the antiderivative, it's not unique, and they differ by a constant. So let's formalize this a little bit more. If the derivative of a function f, so df, let's say our variable is x, is the function f, then that f is the antiderivative of my function f. Now, this function f has a whole family of antiderivatives, which we've seen a couple examples of, but there's an infinite number of them. So, if I've got two antiderivatives of a function, they differ by a constant. So, that is how they are related. The antiderivatives differ by a constant. So, very important to note, an antiderivative is not unique. A function has a family of antiderivatives, and they differ by a constant. So let's take a look at some notation. All the antiderivatives of my function f of x are of this form. That's what they're going to look like when I generate them. So that's called like integration constant. It always has to float around. And we'll see that in the next video when we start integrating. So let's talk about the indefinite integral. This symbol here represents an indefinite integral. Later on, we're going to look at what a definite integral is. But this is an indefinite integral. So we look at an indefinite integral. My function that I want the antiderivative of, then this dx, the differential dx, that, for the purpose of what we're using it for at this moment, refers to what is this variable I'm integrating. Because if I've got more than one variable, I need to know my variable is x. So my differential dx refers to my variable of integration. So then you know x is the variable I'm working with. And that is the notation we use for the antiderivatives or for the integrals. And always remember, we get a family of functions out. So that means as soon as I differentiate this side, I must get back to what is over here. And that's the beauty of integration. If your differentiation is strong and you can differentiate well, then when you integrate, you can always test your answer by differentiating. So the two go hand in hand, they are inseparable, but you have to know your differentiation, your differentiation rules, and you must be able to differentiate quickly to be able to integrate and then to test if you're integrating correctly. So in the two videos that follow, we're just going to look at some calculating some indefinite integrals. And then we're going to move on to definite integrals and what they mean. And then there's another playlist that deals with integration techniques that we can look at.